In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can delete Webflow CMS items from directly inside of Airtable without you having to use any third party automation tools like Zapier or Integromat. So, without further ado, let's get into it. <music> Hey friends, welcome back to the fourth and final installment of me showing you how you can use Airtable to control your Webflow CMS using Airtable scripts. Now in the previous two episodes, I showed you how you can create new CMS items with a button field inside of Airtable. And I also showed you how you can use webhooks and Airtable scripts to update existing Webflow CMS items. The only thing that is left to learn is how to delete Webflow CMS items and that is exactly what I'm going to be showing you in this video today. Now if you haven't had a play around with Airtable scripts before then I highly recommend jumping back to the previous two episodes so that you can kind of get a bit of an idea of how Airtable scripts works and how you can use the button field to control what happens inside of your Webflow CMS. Now this is the final episode but do not worry Aaron from Automate All The Things and I are actually working on creating a little Airtable scripts library for you so that you can just simply jump onto the website copy and paste over the scripts that we will write for you and then make the adjustments based on the tutorials that we'll also publish on the website. So we're still in the earlier stages of working on that but if you want to be notified as soon as we are ready then just head on over to my website you'll be able to get the script for this video today as well as the scripts for the previous episodes and if you go and sign up to that we'll notify you by email as soon as we're good to go. Now before we get into it do me a quick little favor if you've enjoyed the series then please like the video also if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel I make a whole bunch of videos on how you can build your own online business with no code tools but with all of that out of the way let's jump into the tutorial. Okay so before I dive into the tutorial I just wanted to quickly show you how you can navigate your way over to my website to get the code for this particular tutorial. So all you're going to need to do is to come over to this page here sign up if you have already signed up and have already copy and pasted over a code from a previous tutorial then all you'll need to do is click on this button here and what you'll find is the videos that I've already published as well as the code right below it and so in today's video we're going to be going over this particular code here so obviously I'm still going to update the video but the code that I'll be using in this video is something that you'll just be able to jump in here and then you can just copy and paste it over into Airtable. So we're going to navigate our way back to my Airtable base and I am going going to now create a test province so I'm just going to call it test province and then I am going to um, just click on create webflow item and we'll see that now a webflow item for my test province has been created so when I jump in here and I click the refresh button You'll see that it has been created right at the top here. It's populated with all of the information that is currently stored inside of Airtable. Again, if you haven't seen how to create this particular workflow, jump back to the video where I show you how to create new CMS items using Airtable scripts. But what I want to do now is set up a workflow where I can now delete this particular province or CMS item without actually having to jump into Webflow to do it. So what we're going to do is very similar to last time is we're going to create a new field and the field type is a button field so we're just going to type in button and we're going to call this field here delete cms item so i'm just going to quickly style it i will give it a label and then i'm going to switch my action from open url to run script now again um, you'll see in the background that one of your app dashboards will open up i have a dashboard dedicated to all of my scripts so I'm going to go and select that and then because I am using a new script all I need to do is click on install so once the pop-up comes up just click on add app and now what I highly recommend doing especially if you're going to be using a lot of scripts is to just click on the scripting tag at the top and then just click rename and then just change it to whatever you want so I'm just going to call this ufca delete button province and so that way you'll keep a good overview of the types of buttons and workflows that you've got set up under your scripting tag with that being said now all we need to do is click on create field make our script full screen click on get started and then just close this window here 
So again, you'll have a placeholder script in there. All you need to do is just delete all of that and then navigate over to my website and just copy and paste this entire script and now paste it in here. So again, a few things that we're gonna have to do. First of all, we're gonna have to specify what table we're working with. So where does the information set that we wanna delete inside of Webflow? So the way that it works is you just remove um, this field here and then you go open parentheses and then we are going to type in province. And now I know that it is the province table that we're gonna be working with that is going to specify what particular province we want to remove. So the next thing that this row here does is it allows you to pick a specific record within that table. So whenever we have that button field and we click on that button, we are basically telling the script that this is the record inside of the province table that we want to work with. The next thing that we're gonna to have to do, and you don't really need to change the name of this variable, but I'm gonna change it just for clarity purpose, is to change the variable to province ID. So when we go and delete the Webflow item out of the CMS, we're actually gonna to need to tell the Webflow CMS what specific item we want to delete, and we do that by telling them what item ID the record in question has. So I've got this item ID stored inside of my province table. So if we just jump back into here, you can see that I have a field called Webflow ID and inside of that Webflow ID are a whole bunch of Webflow item IDs that I can now use to reference when I send data to the Webflow API. So I'm gonna jump back in here and I am going to state that the record or the field of that record that I want to get is the Webflow ID. So you're just gonna have to go through the process of doing this for your own table and your own records, but it is mostly a matter of replacing the variables that I use to pull in certain data. Now, another thing that is important is just make sure to replace variables that you may have used. So you can see here, I'm still using freelance ID here and freelance ID here. What I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna change this variable here to province ID. So basically what happens now is it says, if this record has a ID or a Webflow ID, because we defined it as that in the previous step, then run the script. Otherwise tell me that there was no record selected. So that way you can ensure that you're not running the script on um, records that are not currently published or haven't got a live item inside of Webflow. So next what we wanna do is we wanna click on province ID. And now what will happen is when we contact the Webflow API, we can specify what record or what item we want to delete out of my Webflow collection. Now, one last thing that you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to get the Webflow collection ID. Now, what you're gonna to need to do now is just remove this and then head on over to Webflow and click on the settings tab for the um, Webflow collection that you're gonna be working with. So you can see right at the top that it has a collection ID and all we need to do is copy and paste that into the section between collections and items. Cool. So now there's nothing else that you have to change down here. So the method that we're gonna be working with is delete. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the API documentation that Webflow has to offer, then definitely jump on over to their website. Even if you just Google Webflow APIs, you'll see that there's a page called developers.webflow.com and they go into quite a lot of detail around what the different field types are, what the methods are of sending data from and to the Webflow CMS. And it's just really useful to kind of get a hang of how all of that works. And to be completely honest, it's not even that difficult, even if you don't come from a coding background, because you'll be doing these things with tools like Zapier and Integromat already. Okay, so of course you have to add your Bira token. Now again, in case you don't know what a Bira token is, it is essentially your password to contact the Webflow API. I am not going to be pasting this in here yet because obviously you'll be able to affect my CMS collection. So I'm just gonna wait with that. And then what we wanna do is once this script has run and it has deleted the item out of Webflow, what I wanna do is I wanna change the status 
of my record inside of Airtable to archive and I wanna remove the Webflow item ID as well as the slug. So just to clarify what I'm going to be doing here, you can see here that Test Province currently has a Webflow ID as well as a slug. And what I wanna do is I wanna remove those values as soon as the item has been deleted out of Webflow. And then of course, I also wanna change the status from live to archived. This is just really good practice. I highly recommend making sure that you are keeping track of how you are interacting with certain types of record. This counts for using scripts, but also tools like Zapier and Integromat. So I have now added my Bira token and all that's left to do now is to navigate your way over to the delete button that was created when you created the button field and now we'll just click on delete. So what's gonna happen now is you've now triggered the script and this information has now been sent to Webflow and we can see now that we got a result where our slug was removed as well as the Webflow item ID. And now if we also jump in to the Webflow CMS, we'll be able to see that the record has been successfully deleted. You might actually have to refresh this page in order to see it. I just had to refresh it because I had a little error that came up, but you'll be able to see now that you can delete Webflow CMS items from directly inside of Airtable. Now, a quick little tip that I wanna give you before I wrap this all up is that if you are getting error messages, one thing that I do recommend doing is adding a line called console.log call to Webflow, which is the variable that basically sends data to the Webflow API and you will get a response that looks something like this and it will basically tell you why certain things are failing. So Zapier does the same thing when an error message comes up and it can sometimes give you a really good idea of why exactly something isn't working. So if along the way you're working on your scripts and there's an error and you're not exactly sure why, all you need to do is just jump in here, add a new line, just call it console log, and then type in the name of the variable that you wanna check. So in this case, if I wanna check the province ID, I can just go ahead and type in province ID, close it off with the semicolon, and you'll be able to see what exactly the issue was if an issue did come up. And just like that, you have learned how to create, update, and delete Webflow CMS items from inside of Airtable without having to spend a dollar on any third-party automation tools like Zapier or Integromat. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, there are heaps more tutorials and scripts coming from Aaron and myself. So if you haven't already, head on over to my website. You'll be able to get the script for this video today as well as the scripts for the previous episodes. And we will notify you as soon as we have more scripts we will show you how you can do a whole bunch of additional fun things with Airtable scripts. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video. Like this video if you haven't already. Other than that, I'll see you back here for the next one. <laughs>